What I'm going to show you how to do tonight is to make this um, piece in the background. It's um, a technique that's done with Stampin' Blends and alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. How do you say that? Um, I saw this just a couple of days ago, a consultant, not a consultant, a demonstrator in Australia named Michelle Jutrisa, I think that's how you say her name, um, had a video on Pinterest, and I thought, wow, that's pretty. This card is actually a direct case, a direct copy of what she had made, and then when I was playing around today, I did some other colors. Um, this is just alcohol from a local drugstore. I'm using the 91%. Um, and in her video, Michelle said that if, if you use the 70% alcohol, it doesn't let the ink uh, float around as well. So I got the 91% alcohol. And then I have a Stampin' Mister, and in this Mister, I have the alcohol. And I have a glass dish here and a small paintbrush. And then our surface that we're working on is vellum, and I've cut some sheets that I can work on. It's vellum, and I use Whisper White cardstock, and what else? And the Stampin' Blends. So the first card that I'm going to demonstrate tonight, or the first, not the card, I'm not going to make the whole card. The first... Um, I don't even know what to call this ink blending that I'm going to do tonight with alcohol. I'm going to use these three colors. I have the dark misty moonlight. Oops, there it goes. I have the dark just jade and the dark cinnamon cider. And those are the three colors that I used in this card on this piece of vellum. I found that the darker colors just work better. Um, the lighter ones, well, they're just too light to really make an impact. So these are my three blends. And I can tell you this, <laughs> this is a little bit of a messy process. I had ink all over my hands today. Um, and so you wanna have something to protect your surface when you're doing this. Um, it is a bit of a mess and you want to have some paper towels. I've got several layers of paper towels that I'm going to work on and then I have some pieces over here to the side that I have torn in half or quarters um, to have handy and you'll see how I use them as we go on with this. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to color with my Stampin' Blends on this piece of vellum. So I'm just gonna do some random colorings and I'm going to use the brush end, the bold end of this blend. And I'm just gonna lay down some ink on this vellum in random places. And I'm going to put all three colors on at once. Michelle did hers a little different um, in her video from how I'm doing mine, but I think we each find our own process that kind of works with us, for us. And um, she actually did one little section at a time and she used the paintbrush and the um, alcohol in a dish more, whereas I decided to use the Stampin' Spritzer and that worked for me, so. So I'm just putting down color in random places. Come back in with, what did I say this was? Dark cinnamon cider. Come back in with a little bit of that. So once you have your vellum um, pretty much covered, and the, the ink will dry, and that's okay, because the alcohol is going to reactivate it. So once you have this covered, then you just want to spray this piece of vellum with the Stampin' Spritzer. 
and have a paper piece of paper towel ready. And several times today, I had this pointed in the wrong direction because it's a little hard to see where the nozzle is on this thing. So watch out for that. So I want to point the spritzer down and I'm just going to spray across here and I want to soak the whole sheet. And then I want to let it sit and it's going to do its thing. And if I see areas where the ink is not kind of floating around, I'm going to go back in and spray a little bit more. Oops, see, I had that pointed in the wrong direction. There, so now I have the ink completely misted with alcohol and it's all kind of blending and running together and that's what we want to happen. So I just tilt the piece of vellum and let the ink come off the edge. And the edges of this won't show in your final card so you can come in, and what I found today when I was playing with this, if I come in with a piece, a piece of paper towel and just run it along the edge or stand this up, I can catch or absorb some of that excess ink running off the edges. I just keep kind of moving it around. I wanna to try to avoid real hard edges and if you see that area right there where I have a little bit of a hard edge, can you see that? I'm just going to go back with the mister and just spritz it one more time and try to point this in the right there, just like that. And let it run off. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit and then I'm going to bring in my heat tool and finish drying it. But I don't want to do that too soon because if I do it too soon, while there's lots and lots of alcohol puddling on this, it'll push the alcohol around and make these little funny edges, which that's kind of a neat effect too, but it's not what I want right now. So I'm gonna keep turning this. Okay, so I think it's safe to turn on the heat tool, and I'm sorry, this is gonna make a little bit of noise, but it dries really quick, quickly. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to dry this off. So, I like how that one turned out. And then the next thing I do is I put this on a piece of white cardstock. Oh, I forgot to mention earlier when I was doing my announcements, um, the new basic white cardstock and other products are in stock, um, like the envelopes. I don't know if you saw my announcement. I think I put it in the newsletter that um, the factory closed that made our Whisper White cardstock and so they, Stampin' Up! had to scramble and find a new source for white cardstock. I do not have any of the new yet. It just, the announcement just came out today that it's in stock, the new, it's called Basic White. But I will be trying it. Next time I order, I'll be getting some, and I'll, I'll let you know what I think. I'm sure it's going to be fine, but, you know, we love our Whisper White. So I kind of like how that turned out, and I'm not going to do anything more with it. What I found today was um, if I went back in and added more ink and then spritzed it, spritzed it again, sometimes the ink started just fading out too much because the more alcohol you add, the lighter the ink seems to become. So, but I'll, I'll try one tonight with you and just show you what happens. But I like this one just the way it is. So I am going to adhere it to the Whisper White and that way it'll be available to use in a card. And I'm just going to use my stamp and seal. Oops. Actually, I'm going to put the stamp and seal. And I'm going to put it on the edges of my cardstock. Let me try to stay on camera. Because the way I use these is 
um, under a window. So the edges of my vellum don't show. And see this one is under a little frame. So the edges don't show. So if I keep my stamp and seal out to the edges, it won't show through the vellum. And honestly, when I looked at these, um, and I'll show you once I get this um, tacked down, the stamp and seal really, with the ink on this, it really doesn't show that much. Now, you can put these face down. Oops, I have a little bit of ink on my finger. Or not ink, glue. You can put these face down with the ink side down, which gives you a little more muted look. Or you can put them face up with the ink side up. One thing I, I've noticed is where ink pulls a little heavier, you get a little glossy area on the vellum. And I don't know if that's because of the alcohol or that's just where the the dye and the ink kind of settles. I don't know. So if you don't like that, you could turn this over and you see it still looks very pretty even from the back. The front looks a little brighter and I don't mind that little glossy area. You could cover it up with a sentiment or something, but I like I like this one on the front, so that's how I'm going to adhere it. And there we go. So I don't need to trim this off, but I'm going to just to be neat. Um, now I can use this on a card. I could cut a window and just use this on a card front. Okay. And you can see where I put the, um, the stamp and seal, it does not show through here because the ink kind of camouflages it. So there you go. All right, so that's sample number one. Let's try another one. And this time I'm going to um, use some colors I haven't used yet. I'm gonna use, this is Dark Mossy Meadow. This is, um, that's actually light Mango Melody. I want the dark. There we go, the Dark Mango Melody. And I thought I'd throw in some um, Misty Moonlight with this combination and see what I get. That's the thing about this. You don't know what you're going to get <laughs> until you try it. It's fun. I mean, it's. Um, it took a few times for me today to kind of get the hang of it, but um, it's fun. So I'm going to start with this green and just put some color down. I'm not sure how this um, mango melody is going to work. It's kind of light, but we'll see. It might might be fine. Need some more green. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I have my vellum colored and I'm going to get my spritzer and pay attention to which way I'm pointing it. And get that vellum saturated so all the ink starts moving around on it. Then I, I give it a second. Grab a piece of paper towel and just absorb off of these edges. Now here's an area with that hard line that I was talking about before. So I'm going to go back in and just lightly, try to lightly spritz this. And you can go in with the corner of the paper towel and kind of just 
pick up ink where it looks like it might be forming a hard edge. I kind of like what's happening with this, honestly. Got a little bit of ink right there pooling. There we go. You get some pretty effects. Okay, I'm going to bring in the heat tool. So it's pretty, but I don't have enough color right there. So I'm going to go back in. I don't know if this is going to work or not. We'll see. This is like a big experiment here. So I'm going to go back in with this Mango Melody and drop that in there and then remist and see what happens. And that darkened it up a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm just tilting the vellum so the ink or the ink mixed with the alcohol runs and doesn't make such a hard edge. Just tap it down on the paper towel. I kind of like that. I do have a little bit of a hard edge right there, but I don't mind it. And I think I'm going to let it be. So I'm going to finish drying this. And let's see what it looks like on a piece of Whisper White. I like that. So I'm going to just adhere this. Yeah, I kind of like that. Wow, I do like that. So I'm just going to trim this down so it's ready to use on a card. I think that would be pretty with flowers, butterfly, the hummingbird maybe. Really pretty. Okay, so we have two so far. All right, let me grab another piece of vellum. I want to grab a small piece because I wanted to show you what I meant about using the, the dryer, the heat tool, while you have a lot of alcohol still puddling on your vellum. Let's see if I can recreate what happens in that situation. So I'm going to go back to um, use Mossy Meadow on this one. And uh, the Cinnamon Cider, dark. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to spritz the vellum and before it dries so much, I'm going to start pushing the ink around with the heat tool. And you'll see it's going to make, they call them blooms, where you can see the edge of where the alcohol is kind of rolling out. So get my mister and spritz this.
So I didn't spray all over, I sprayed in spots. And you see the blooms right there? So if I get my heat tool and start pushing that ink around, So it takes a little longer to dry, but you see, you get a completely different effect doing that. And I kind of, I like that actually, but I'm going to show you, there's one spot that I would probably want to um, mess with, and that's that real dark spot right there. So this is where I might use the paintbrush. I'm going to put a little bit of this alcohol in my dish and try not to spill it. Just a little bit. And I'm going to bring my paintbrush in with just a little bit of alcohol on it. Can you see that, what I'm talking about, that little spot right there? Just get a little bit of alcohol on the brush and just come in and put that alcohol on there. And see it softened it a little bit. Wow, I kind of like this, how that one turned out. So, but I am going to come back in. If you want to soften your edges, add, add alcohol. Um, you can do it with the brush like I just did. I think it's easier to mist it. So I'm going to aim maybe along here and see what happens. I don't know. I'm afraid to mess with this because I honestly like it the way it is. <laughs> but I want to show you what happens. So I'm going to mist right in here and see if I can soften some of that. There we go. See how it softened those lines? And then I missed it in here and softened these lines. And then at some point you have to say, you know what, I like that just the way it is. I'm going to stop messing with it. So what I do is I keep tilting the vellum, and that helps avoid getting another hard edge if you let the alcohol and the ink run back the other way. And you get that edge where the wet meets the dry. So I'm going to come in and mist this. Wow. Really interesting stuff. So you can see what has happened here though. Because I went back in and added a lot more alcohol, I lost some of that interesting stuff that happened. So I wanted to show you. Um, and it kind of just made everything pale in there. where I kept adding more alcohol. So the moral of the story is sometimes you're better off just leaving well enough alone. Oops. And if you do that, you get some texture. See, the first two that I did were done a lot quicker because I didn't fuss with them. So, yeah. Don't fuss. Just put the ink down. and. But now I kind of like this. So, I'll let this dry a little bit. So, we'll dry this one off.
you sometimes can't tell until you put it on a piece of Whisper White. It's really not bad. It's a little more subtle than these others. Can you tell? Can you see how this is uh, more washed out because I kept adding alcohol to it? Yeah, the more you leave it alone, the better off you are. <laughs> that's that's what I learned today. So let's do another one. Let's use um, let's use some pinks and purple because it is Valentine's season, right? Yeah, I've been making Valentine's. All right, so I have um, dark magenta madness here. And I'm going to flip my paper towels over so I can see what I'm doing. And I found today that this uh, ink really stains um, the vellum. I mean, it really has staying power. Here's the card I made. It really comes out pretty vibrant compared to some of the other ones. So not all these inks behave the same way with this technique. But that magenta madness really um, is intense. And then this is, I think this is Rococo Rose. Yes, yeah, dark Rococo Rose. And I think this was the one that surprisingly kind of faded out. So we'll see what happens here. All right, get our spritzer. And see what happens. You see how intense that magenta madness gets? It's just like, wow. So I'm going to let it sit for a second. And it looks like everything's moving around pretty good. This is just playing. You know, that's what this is. Sometimes you just have to play. And see what you get. All right, so it's starting to dry. I still have a couple puddles, but I'm gonna bring in the heat tool and just see what happens. Dried okay, but I think I'm going to intensify that color with the Rococo, not the Rococo, the Magenta Madness. I'm gonna come back in and just Fill in spots where, and that's another way to get rid of a hard edge. If you go back over it with the Stampin' Blend, it reactivates that ink and that hard edge goes away. And I think I used some blue in my other one and I like what happened with that. So I'm gonna add some blue. All right, ready? So where the ink wasn't moving around, where I could still see my marks from using the Stampin' Blend, I went ahead and spritzed those areas directly, and that pushed the ink. And now I really like what's happening. So here's where I would get a paper towel and just get a corner of it and just come in and drink up puddles like that puddle right there. I just want to drink that up so I don't get a really huge dark splotch. So I'm just coming in just like that. See that? Can you see? Am I on the camera? I'm just coming in and make a little like corner with the paper towel and that one I can probably, there we go, tilt that off. 
Yes, this is pretty. And again, you don't, you won't have to worry about the edges um, because you won't see those in your card. You could probably put one of these directly on a card front and not a window. I haven't tried that yet. Now here's an edge that I want to get rid of. So this is where the vellum is wet and it's meeting an area that's dry. So it's making this hard edge. So I just want to come in and spritz out towards the edge and see what happens. You can see how I had ink everywhere today. <laughs> yeah. It's messy, but it's fun, and you get some gorgeous results. Oops. So I need a little more spritzing there. This is so wet it's curling. Oops, I didn't aim well and I sprayed onto the card right there, or the vellum. You see where I sprayed? Right here, and it's much lighter now. My aim wasn't very good. All right, so I think I'm going to dry this and see what we've got. I'm going to add a little more, a little more ink, and I think I want to add more blue in this area. It's amazing how intense that color becomes when you wet it with the alcohol. So again, I'm just gonna come in with my paper towel and just grab little puddles up with the paper towel so that they don't pull too long and start to dry and leave a really dark area. So here's a, a place where I might come in with the um, the paintbrush and just soften that just a little bit. All right, so now I'll adhere this to some Whisper White. That's the back side and that's the front. I actually, I think I like the back side on this one, so I'm gonna adhere it this way to my cardstock. Gives it a little more subtle feel, and then I'll just trim it so that it's ready to use on a card. Trim off those strange edges where the ink kind of puddles. Yes, I do like that. Well, I wasn't sure that one was going to turn out, but <laughs> you know what? I do like it. Pretty. Okay, so that's how you make these pieces. We have three winners. I'm not, I'm still undecided about this one. Let me put it on a piece of cardstock and, um, really? It's kind of pretty, isn't it? It's a little, it's not as bright as the other ones, but I think it would be pretty on a card.
Yeah. I think that would be a nice card element, don't you? So my challenge tomorrow to myself will be to use all of these elements that I just made in cards. Well, I might not have all four done tomorrow, but I'll use at least two of them in cards tomorrow. Boy, look at that. That's where the overspray happened. That's pretty. So I have these elements to use. I'm going to think of some ways to do that tomorrow, and I will post these on my Facebook page and show you what I came up with. <laughs>